So when we built our, uh, our chicken coop and this enclosed run that's attached to it, uh, we went through a lot of extra efforts to make sure that it was secure and uh, that, that no animals could be able to get in there to our chickens. So I know that this chicken coop and, and this enclosed run here, it looks really kind of rough. It looks kind of cobbled up. We've added a lot of metal to it uh, to keep the wind off of them through the years. But when we built this, uh, we did go through a lot of extra efforts to make sure there was no small openings or anywhere that any animals could get in there and our chickens would be safe. So this, a few days ago, uh, we finally, for the first time, had a predator get in the chicken coop and we ended up losing some chickens. So on this outside run, we have two doors. Uh, one is this door here that's just an access for chickens and you can see it has very small uh, cracks around the side of the door that door uh, there's no way an animal can get in that door and you can see we have the this is the half inch hardware cloth that hardware cloth goes completely around the whole outside run here and there's no way that a predator could get in there as well and what you can't see is is there is a, actually a bottom board that goes across here that the the fencing is stapled to but underneath there there is concrete blocks that go all the way around the outside in the ground to prevent any animals from being able to dig their way into this this chicken coop and run area so along the roof area here these are just three quarter inch boards so this is the smallest opening that there is is about a three quarter inch gap we shot for you know, nothing bigger than one inch openings to prevent any type of small predators from getting in the chicken coop. So this is the west side of the chicken coop. It looks pretty rough. I mean, it looks kind of cobbled up because we've added metal to here to help keep, and plastic to keep the wind off the chickens. But underneath there, that's all covered in that half inch hardware cloth. So that's completely fenced in uh, to keep any predators from being able to get in there. So our egg box, our egg box actually has a latch right there and it has another latch on this side so it's got two latches to be able to get in and access that in case you get a really smart raccoon or something um, there's no way of an animal would be able to open that egg box up so after two years of having this chicken coop um, finally a predator got in by being able to kind of get under this door here now under that door we have a concrete block in the ground so that he can't dig through under the door but the problem is that concrete block is only 16 inches wide and that door is probably 20 inches wide so the concrete block did not quite fill the whole space underneath so you ended up with about three or four inches of dirt between that concrete block and the post that the door is hung on so that was enough of a space that was filled with dirt that uh, an animal was able to dig that out and get into our chicken coop and attack our chickens. So we ended up losing, we lost six chickens so far. We have a seventh that is hurt um, that will probably not make it. So we'll probably lose seven out of our 12 chickens in, in one predator attack. Uh, that'll be the worst attack we've had. Normally we only lose one or two at a time when something has happened. So this is definitely uh, the worst uh, attack we've had on our chickens so far. So the animal that was able to get in the chicken coop and kill him ended up being a mink. So a mink can get in very small holes and it doesn't take much for one to get in. And I know that's why I wanted to keep it as secure as possible. And a mink is what got under that door and got in there. And the reason I know that, um, one, just because of how small the hole was that he crawled through. And uh, two, we, we put one of the dead chickens in a live trap and we caught the mink about um, later that evening after he attacked them the first time. So we did catch the mink uh, the night of the, you know, after the attack. So hopefully we won't have a problem anymore. Now that spot in the ground there under the door, we now have filled that void with a brick. So now there's a block and a brick in the ground and hopefully no more predators will be able to dig underneath that door. So after this all happened, uh, my wife was pretty upset uh, losing her chickens. So we kind of discussed it and we decided, well, we'd probably go ahead and get some more baby chicks. We'd seen them at the farm store. Um, so we decided to get 10 baby chickens. So my wife went to the store the other day to get some baby chicks, came back with 12 baby chickens. So 
I won't be surprised if six more show up before this is over with. So we've got, well we had 12 baby chicks here in the barn. We've had one die so far. Um, but I guess they got some kind of a guarantee. So she's going to take that chick back and see if she can get it replaced. So out here in our extremely messy pole barn, this is where we have our brooder box. So this right here is our brooder box and this is where the baby chicks are. It's 20 degrees outside, but we're keeping the chicks warm in this brooder box. And let me show you. So we've got a uh, tarp on here. It's kind of overlapped a few times, so it's a few layers thick, but we've got a tarp on top of the brooder box. And then, open it up. So inside of the brooder box, you will see we have a heat lamp here, and then we got another heat lamp over here on the other side. But those baby chicks are under there. They're keeping warm. We got food and water in there for them. And so right now it is reading about 80 some degrees. It's not perfect, but it's enough to keep them uh, alive in there. So preferably we'd want it a little warmer than that. So I'm gonna close them back up. So why did we buy chickens in February and have to keep them go to these extremes to be able to raise chickens? It's because you're looking at five to six months before these things start laying eggs. So all the chickens that she bought were were supposed to be pullets. They were sexed, but that's not 100% you know true. Uh, they just sex them the best they can. So we're going to have a chance that we'll have some roosters mixed in here as well. But we want to make sure that we're getting chicken eggs as soon as possible. So we'll go ahead and get these raised in here in February. And then hopefully, you know, by the end of summer, uh, we'll be getting eggs from these new chickens. So my wife did buy a lot of different chickens we haven't had before. So she ended up buying some different types of Easter Egger chickens. She ended up buying some Morans. She ended up buying some Polish chickens. Um, I can't remember all the different types she bought, but I think most of them were considered, I guess, more exotic chickens this time. So we're going to end up uh, having some dark eggs, some... Uh, some colored eggs we'll end up with some white eggs we haven't had any white eggs yet so uh, hopefully hopefully they sexed all these chickens right and they all end up being female and then we'll end up having a, uh, a bunch of egg layers this summer so anyway I just wanted to share that with you we really thought we had a, a secure chicken coop and it doesn't take much of an opening uh, for some predators to be able to get there, get in there and get your chickens. So we had them locked up uh, during the day because we had both, well, I was at work and my wife went somewhere and when she came back, um, she found, you know, half of her chickens dead. So um, it didn't take much. Uh, so if you do build a chicken coop and you want to be able to lock them up inside of something uh, to keep them safe, make sure that there's no way that they can dig through because uh, it just even in the dirt if they can dig through three or four inches uh, that's enough that you could lose your chickens so hopefully it won't happen again but we will be moving them to the barn you know here this uh this spring we'll move our chickens out of this out of this chicken coop we're going to move them to the barn so when we build that we'll go through the same kind of effort to make sure that there's nothing bigger than a than an inch square that an animal can get through because any bigger than that we're taking a chance so anyway that's it uh for this video just thought i'd share what was happening here uh on the homestead so thanks for watching see you guys in the next video